I'm Stergios Kapertas, I'm professor of economics and recently uh, I, uh, I'm the Clifford Heinz Chair in the Economics and Public Policy of, of Peace. And uh, I have been affiliated also with various centers. I have been interim director of uh, the Institute for Mathematical and Behavioral Sciences, the Global Peace and Conflict Studies. I'm affiliated with the Center for the Study of Democracy as well. Well, there is not one particular research scope accomplishment like result that I can I can point out to several, <laughs> but is the issue, the more is developing a framework that is uh, allows not just for producing and trading that you have in economics, but also briefly, simply saying taking things away from others. That is a mathematical model, a framework uh, that can be adapted in many different, uh, for, to be applied to different circumstances, like from civil wars to international wars, to uh, the formation of gangs and mafias, to the formation of states, and um, as well as uh, examining circumstances under which you have competing interests in uh, modern economies and societies and politics. So, uh, and I have I've applied this in different settings, and uh, what comes out of this is that uh, uh, this is very important for not just for the sake of trying to analyze these circumstances, how things are about the effect of civil wars on the particular countries, but also uh, the severe economic effects those things have. Uh, for example, there are, have been uh, civil wars in the post-World War II period of more than uh, in more than 70 countries with 16 million deaths and so on. And that has had not only just the effect on the people themselves, but it had uh, serious effects on the economy. And therefore, the implication is that you cannot just uh, examine economics separate from those types of uh, interactions. They are very important, they cannot be left out even for analytical purposes, and it's very important to incorporate them whenever you try to understand economic development or uh, uh, even modern economies, what happens in modern economies. Well, uh, let's take an example about, uh, say, having property in uh, land, which is a very sort of, so we take for granted in the US here. Uh, you, we have our house, nobody is going to come and claim it and say, well, this is my house. Right? Well, this happens in many parts of the world. Perhaps in most of the population on Earth has sort of this insecurity even of possessing the land on which they live. So in order to be able to have this luxury that we have here, and it's also true in most uh, rich countries in the world, it, there are many conditions that have to be satisfied. First of all, there has to be a government that is able to make commitments, is able to, it, it has the infrastructure, has the court system, the police, the title agencies that will register the land. And you are pretty sure that uh, uh, if you have, uh, if this takes if, if, if uh, the, you, the whole system is 100% free of corruption, you cannot, someone cannot go to the judge and say, here are, are, uh, you have $1,000, uh, let me take uh, your land away, for example. And uh, that happens in much of the world. And uh, this is a costly system, so governance, government is costly and can be afforded only by richer societies, and it's a vicious circle. If you don't have the money to pay for those property rights in land, then uh, you cannot be richer. And since you are not rich, richer, richer, you cannot pay for those things and engage in economic development. And this is only an example about uh, property in land. It's uh, property in, uh, say, shares in a corporation in a public corporation in a, in a, uh, that has shares in the New York Stock Exchange or other stock exchanges, it's much more complex legally. 
and it's much more open to ways of uh, cheating and people taking things away from one another, managers taking money away from shareholders and so on. So these are applications, some of the applications one can think of and uh, their importance for uh, even modern economies. Well, for most of us academics, especially those who are involved in theory and modeling, the difference, it's very hard to assess whether we made a difference. The effect is very diffuse. Uh, it's, uh, you influence other academics, perhaps some academics who are more applied, who are going to do work on policy, and even for them, if they do policy, it does not necessarily mean that they have much influence. It's very difficult to say uh, directly. But we have influence in uh, the world of ideas, and perhaps one example like I have is uh, that I have a former student, PhD student, Gary Milande, who was instrumental in um, pushing and for creating the, what is called the World Development Report in 2011. Uh, the world, this is a, a document, a book, that has, every year has a different theme in, uh, and it's uh, uh, published by the World Bank. And uh, that has effect, a tremendous effect on the agendas that international organizations, NGOs, governments, other agencies have in uh, what happens in uh, much of the developing world. And the theme, the topic of the 2011 World Development Report was uh, conflict, security, and development. So that, and that was my student who, I presume under my, he was trained by me, and then under my influence he created this, and then through this process you have some, uh, I guess, some influence that could make a difference in how the world is viewed. Well, part of this uh, whole research, one, uh, uh, project and uh, that I have pursued and I continue to pursue is documenting the costs of uh, violence, the costs of conflict and the costs of actually non-violent conflict in many ways as an economist and uh, we have uh, in some cases they can range for some countries over 50% 50, 50 of GDP. For most rich countries it is below 10% or even 5%. And uh, that's important for thinking about it. Countries can uh, improve their well-being, uh, the well-being of their citizens, by reducing those and finding ways by uh, in reducing those costs.